Alright, screw Dark Souls, we've actually found the hardest game of all time. And also, screw you, because you made the hardest game of all time. How are you guys doing it? How's your E3? Uh, it's been pretty good so far. We've had a lot of that reaction as well. <laughs> a lot of people who now hate us. So, that's been interesting. <laughs> this, this feels like a real homage to really just great boss design, which is something we haven't seen since the 8-bit and 16-bit days. Was that the original idea for you guys for making this? Uh, yeah, we wanted to just focus on like the boss design ideas. Yeah. and. Uh, the sort of uh, the way they're made and like the way they look is sort of inspired by Zelda, like SNES Zelda games, and stuff like that. And the initial uh, game was a jam game for Ludendare where the theme was you only get one. And our sort of like initial idea was to make a, a do a D make of Shadow of the Colossus where we were making just boss fights and see what we could do in the three days we had at the time, and that became this full game. Can you sort of talk about, I mean, it's just for viewers maybe that haven't seen this, it's one health point, one arrow, and basically just a succession of boss fights that are completely, seem completely optional to do. Why, why that design? Why the arrow? I mean, you referenced in Zelda. Uh, was it just because the, the, the bow and arrow in Zelda was such just a great, great weapon? Well, actually, it's because of the, the theme for the, the jam that we did. It was, uh, you only get one. So we've got the one HP thing, which goes with that, and the bosses all have one HP, you have one HP, and the, the one arrow. So the arrow is the central part of that. So you, you fire this one arrow, and when you need to use it again, you either have to go pick it up or drag it back to you. And that's opened a lot of interesting uh, designs with these bosses. So it, it makes, with uh, there's a blob, a blob fight where you can fire it through them and then drag the arrow back through them and hit them as well. Yeah. Um, so that's opened up a lot of interesting design things with, with just the arrow, but that, I think that was just because of the theme rather than uh, any other okay. games as inspiration and stuff, yeah. Excellent. Well, from what we played there, the, the initial entry into this is there's a couple of boss fights, a handful of boss fights to sort of teach you the mechanics, and then once you go through that next door, you're, you're free to go where you want. I mean, what, what's, what's the sort of leg? Are we talking like, is there a world? Is there a land? Does it explore, range, How does it work? Yeah. Well, at the start, you're sort of dropped into this area that you don't know anything about, and you have uh, these four uh, titans you have to kill, yeah. which unlock the rest of the game. And the, the four at the start, uh, they sort of teach you some of the things about the game, like you'll die a lot, um, and you should probably prioritize surviving over um, anything else. Like people, a lot of people will die quickly if they run in and just shoot first, ask questions later. So it teaches you how to get around, get used to those things. And then when it go, when you go through the big door after that part, the world just opens up and it's just free roaming, exploration, you can go in any direction. Kind of like the, f the very first Zelda on the NES. Uh, you just you could go anywhere you wanted and just see what you find. So from that, uh, some of the bosses will be optional, so you just have to kill a certain amount to get to the end area, and then you go through the final, final fights. So when you're ranging, when you're free roaming, uh, are the bosses actually in and around that land, or you have, you'll see a door and that indicates that there will be a boss within that area? There will be some that are, uh, indoors like those would be like main ones but then there'll be a few secret ones roaming around that you can if you keep your eyes open you might be able to find and engage music i wasn't too sure but because the aircon was blasting away in there what are you guys doing for the music for this uh well the audio guy david fenn uh we've got loads of uh, I uh music for each boss has a different track and everything uh so there's l a lot of different uh musical variations we've got some crazy like math rock for some of the, for one of the fights i know and loads of stuff inspired by Japanese games and Final Fantasy IX. I know it was a big inspiration for Dave. Um, so that kind of that kind of stuff. Yeah. No, the the range, the variety of bosses, even from what we just played, is astounding. What was the inspiration for all these designs? Well, we like the, to have a hard game, and we think that if you keep a, a, a flat level of difficulty that's hard, then the entire thing will be challenging and good. And then to make it different, you just have to have really different fights. So we just try to think of crazy stuff to put in and just do whatever our imaginations tell us to, really. So the first few are weird, like uh, the, there's a brain in an ice cube, which we called Brain Freeze. Half of these started as puns, actually, like Brain Freeze, Ice Cube, a lot of ice-based puns. Um, so yeah, we just sort of, doodle weird designs and then see what we could do with those things like what kind of attacks would this creature have if it looked like this and that kind of thing so. okay so wrapping up then where can people play this when can people play this uh, it's going to be coming out early 2015 
uh, for PC, Mac, Linux, and PS4 and PS Vita. Thanks very much for talking to us. All the best. Thank you. Thanks for having me.